Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick. Welcome to the channel. We're going to look at doing stuff with light leaks inside of Boris Effect Optics from Lightroom via Photoshop. Hey folks, so we're going to basically look at how I have made my own light leak and how I manipulate light leaks inside of Boris Effects. So it's not just using presets, although I've made some of my own. Um, but it's how you can start off with a very basic light leak and the different functions you can do to manipulate them and get it to do exactly what you want and then do a little bit more refinement inside Photoshop itself. And the reason why we're using Photoshop instead of Lightroom is that we have a chance to basically change stuff afterwards if we need to. And even if you don't use Photoshop and you're afraid of Photoshop, this technique is very, very easy and it's a good thing to add to your arsenal of skills. So let's jump straight into this now. This is an image of Natasha Kalashnikova that I shot as a remote shoot a while ago. And um, so I've only done a tiny little bit of this, um, kind of a small bit of um, uh, contrast stuff and a little bit of spot removal, but that's it. We're just going to basically jump straight in. So normally we'd go into um, the photo, edit in and choose Photoshop, but we're going to use the shortcut command E normally. But I've already opened this in Photoshop for speed and we're going to work away from there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this layer, which we can do from layer, new, layer via copy or command or control J, or you can drag the icon down to the new layer icon. Then we right click on it and we go convert to smart object. So this sets up so that we can edit again in the future. This is like the most basic Photoshop and probably the only actual real Photoshop we're gonna do apart from a little bit of blend mode stuff in a minute. Um, but that's about it. So what we're gonna do is that is now ready to go and I'm gonna to go to filter and I'm gonna choose Boris Effects Optics. So optics is opening and whatever we have set up the last time is how it's set up. All right. So now we could go for a default here and that would just bring up the default light leak. And we're going to go to parameters here to start making our edits from there. The big things here is that normally you won't see glow or element. It'll look like this at the start. Okay. So you have the overall parameters and then you have the individual parameters. And we can see the checkbox here on element one is there. And um, that's this element here, but you can have other elements on or various combinations of those. We're just gonna go with a one element leak for this demonstration. And um, okay, when you're in general combine, you're in screen mode. So that means that areas that are lighter um, uh, kind of will have a bit more of effect um, and then it ignores the dark areas. If you click leaks only, you can actually see what the leak itself looks like. We're gonna work from this. Everything, as we can see here, is either one or zero, apart from the seed. And the seed is just basically what gives you the shape. So if we move through the seed, and even as we go through that, there's like only subtleties in the changes. So if we go back to like 0.12, we can see that even as we move there a little bit, it hasn't changed that much. And um, it's only kind of every full thing that it gives a big change. All right. And um, background brightness, I just mentioned very quickly. Um, let me go back to uh, screen so we can see this. Background brightness is literally our original image. All right. Okay. And uh, screen mode is basically, basically where we were. So scale lights literally will change the intensity basically and, and go from kind of being dim to being kind of super, super strong. Okay, so somewhere there is probably a little bit better because we're going to control the opacity later on inside of Photoshop, so it doesn't matter. There is uh, offset darks then is literally, you know, do we want it to be darker or lighter? Okay, so as we bring it this way, it gets wider and wider and eventually blows out. Okay. So I'm happy with it kind of about there. I like to kind of contrast what's going on. Now, don't worry, I'm not worried about it being over the face or any of that kind of stuff because we will deal with that shortly. And the hue shift then basically, if we come down to the element and open the element, have a look, you can see we have these three colors, which are our center, mid, and outer color. Uh, and if we, if we just grab the midpoint for a second here, we change the midpoint. Uh, can you see the way the intensity is changing here? So that way the reds are kind of really, really strong. So the reds are moving out from that midpoint. So that's just letting you kind of know where that is. All right. And um, we can change these individual colors, but if we want to change the overall color tone, we grab hue shift. Okay. And that will basically cycle through all of the colors on the hue scale and, and will apply any kind of differentiation between them. Let's say for example here that our center point was a, like a blue tone in, or, or like a purple instead of a red. We can see here that this will be the opposite one on, on the hue shift. Like, so that way, as it changes, it's still relative to the original color. Let me just jump this out and just grab the original kind of red that's there. And then if we, as we bring our hue back down to zero, 
kind of back to the original colors we had. Now, I don't necessarily do a lot with them. Sometimes I play around with these. So like noise amplitude and noise frequency, frequency uh, relative to the Y axis. And so if we, if we go amplitude, that's the one that kind of changes what's going on with the intensity of it. All right. Uh, the frequency will basically act like a scale, like a zoom in and out. OK. And then relative Y1 means it squishes it on the Y axis. OK, so you can stretch it and squish it if you want. OK, and midpoint, maybe make the midpoint a bit larger. So that way the red is affecting a little bit more of it. And then for me, I'm try I try and get the like a dark area here around by where the face is. For that, I use the X and Y. So that's the X to get it kind of centered and then the Y to move it up and down. So and I like the fact that we've got the colors moved. So we've got the yellow here. The yellow is probably a little bit strong. So I'm actually going to make that kind of a little bit more orange. OK, and then I'm going to make this art, the actual orange part even stronger, maybe deeper. OK, so I'm happy with that. And again, I'm just going to scoot it around a small bit on the X axis just to get it a little bit more subtle. There we go. All right, I'm happy with that. So that is some of the controls. Now, noise detail basically is how much detail there is in noise. What we see here that's creating the light leak is noise. But if we bring that up from zero, we'll see why I don't ever change this. Yeah, there we go. It's pretty nasty. I'm sure, I'm sure it could be used as an effect for something, but just not particularly for light leaks themselves. OK, so I'm happy with what's going on with all of this kind of leak. Um, and basically, the only thing I haven't really kind of looked at properly now is glow. OK, um, so well, we have stuff like the size. OK, so size is set to two. So as we see here, that's actually the size changing. All right. And then you can make it really, really big. So if the midpoint controls it and it's only kind of mid colors. Um, but I think for these, a lot of the times the default actually looks fine. And um, same with the brightness as well. Um, it's like if we have it too bright, it just basically blows out. So I, I would generally kind of use it uh, at that kind of normal point too. And you've got a relative height as well, which is controlled by that little circle. So we can actually drag it manually if we need. Right, so let me just kind of get that around there. And um, so that's pretty much softness is basically, you know, like literally what it says, the softness. It's, it's, it's one of these things that's not that hard to figure out, basically. So I like what's happening here. And I'm going to show you how I would normally use it with Photoshop. I will actually change this now to leaks only. We we'll come here to the little cog. That's the save. And we save that out. And that will come up as as it is and um, just as the leak only. And then we'll come down here and change it to screen to match what was going on before. Uh, and then you you basically just use opacity to get it to the level you want it to be at. I think it's better to have way too much so you see what's going on with it. And then you can just set the level that you want. Now, if we wanted to go in and change it, we can double click on optics. But one other thing that I should mention that you can do uh, to cancel because we don't want to do that. What we want to do is if we go uh, command T. Uh, yep, that's fine. And what we can do then is we can reverse it. So let's say we wanted to flip it, flip direction of it. Come in and give that a negative. Oh. Yeah, 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 good, yeah, that's fine because it's yeah, it's flipping the thing before we go and just press return. Um, to apply it and then it will apply it to the actual um, the filtered version of it. So it's basically in the background is opening optics and then reapplying the filter. So we've kind of flipped the filter from what it was. Now you're not under uh, any obligation whatsoever to use um, smart filters. For example, here, if I just come down to the background uh, and turn just turn that off altogether here, if I go into filter and go into optics, it remember the last setting, which will probably be a flipped version. Uh, we'll see in a second anyway, um, because it's the last thing that was done. So we can see here we've got this and it's, it's kind of ready to go as is. And we just do a save. Uh, so it's literally just remember the last thing we did. So this will be a rasterized layer. So this is just literally a blank layer um, as is. And if we go to uh, screen, we can see here it's given that look. And again, we can use the opacity to bring that down to where we want it to be. Now, this rasterized layer can be copied to another image um, just for the sake of it. Um, to be quick, I'm just going to duplicate this as if it was a different image. And um, just to duplicate menus coming up there. All right. And what I'm going to do is 
in the this is the oh it's copy too all right so it's copy so let me just um because i've been looking around obviously um so tab to bring these bits back so let me just get rid of these um completely here because we got the image and we can just drag this background here drag it up onto the other image if i hold the shift key it'll drop in the middle and we can see that we can basically copy our, our layer across. So if we have, have a couple of images that we want to have a similar look to, we could do that as well. OK, and we could decide that this is too much and just bring it back and just have it in kind of as a subtle kind of effect if we wanted. And we can do our own masking inside of here. But the easy mask is really good. But I've shown the easy mask quite a few times before. And um, but if we were doing that, what we could do is very quickly, we go background and do the quick selection tool and go select subject. All right, so it's done a very quick selection of the subject. So what we can do is we can just apply it to here with a layer mask and then we can invert it. So command I to or control I to invert and that will invert the mask. And it's given us a very quick mask. So that way the light leak that we had is basically just on the actual background. So if we wanted, we could bring up the opacity. And assuming my mouse will let me move. So we can make this stronger. And then what I sometimes what I do in situations like this to try and make a mask sit um, so let me just duplicate that for a second here. OK, and then I'm going to get rid of the mask completely here. So the mask is gone and um, delete mask. And then what we do is we just pull down the opacity on the actual uh, mask area. So what happens is then we got like these are adding together a little bit, but we've got 7% kind of going into the edges and the masks and stuff like that. And because of the fact that it's a little bit stronger, area, might pull that back to compensate. But we have a little bit of the blend of light leak over the body as well. So it can like any of the edges that are kind of rough, it'll just do a little bit of work on those. So hopefully folks, you learned something a little bit about light leaks and how you can manipulate them and make them your own. What's there by default with presets is really, really good. But being able to get into the nitty gritty and create something that's unique to you is definitely beneficial. Folks, I do have a 25% discount code SMCC-25. And that gets you 25% off subscriptions or off if you buy the actual full item itself for, from Boris FX. Link below and more details below, obviously. So folks, if you like this video and you want to see more, and I'll also be covering other applications as well and Lightroom and Photoshop, please do subscribe. Hit the like button if you like that, if you got something out of it. Share it with your friends. And of course, if you want to get notifications when new videos come online, do hit the bell. Thanks for watching, folks. And I you know, hope to see you next time. Bye.